Actually, that's good. Hi, my name is Michael Pucciarelli, and tonight I'll be talking about how I use the white plexus table in my still life photography. First, I want to talk about who I am. I started professional photography in 2010. I got an associate degree in digital photography in 2013. I joined Fit Professional Photographers America in 2015. In 2017, I joined the Maryland Affiliate Club. In 2020, I joined the Pennsylvania Affiliate Club. So the white plex label and Adobe Photoshop are two very good tools I use, and they're very difficult tools to use. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. These are some sample images I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the lighting, and I'm going to talk, talk about the Photoshop and Adobe Bridge. Tonight's agenda is going to be on the white plex table. I'm also going to talk about how to use simple lighting modifiers to process and light beautiful images using the white plex table. I'll talk about the camera settings that I use. And I'm going to talk about Adobe Photoshop and also Adobe Camera Raw. If you ever have any questions, just feel free to email me at mpucciarelli art2016 at gmail.com. These are all the plexi tables I use and the regular tables. And tonight's focus, it's gonna be on the white plexiglass table. These lighting modifiers can be used with any table. And they can also be used, like any table, also refers to the white plexiglass table. To add dramatic lighting, I'd recommend using anything silver, like a mirror, a silver card, a gold card, a silver reflector. And there is a difference between the silver card and the gold card. The gold card produces like a yellowish tint to the photograph. And the silver card also, it produces very dramatic lighting. And if maybe if something silver is too hard as a light to use, I recommend using like the white reflector or the white card to add soft light to the photograph. Black cards are great. Black cards are great for blocking glares in a product photograph. Black cards are great for helping the strobe control the light, where if there's too much light in the background, a black card could help straighten that problem out. Then there's plastic fusion scrims where these fusion scrims, they help soften the light of the strobe. And then there's colorful gels, and I'll talk about this later. Colorful gels can really add beautiful color to the background and subject of the image. And the ways to use colorful gels, a common way to use it is to have a light color and then a dark color, or maybe a dark color and then a light color. And then there's medium sized white plexiglass sheets. And these are great for putting in front of the strobe to soften the light. Then the cinephil, cinephil is like black aluminum foil. And this is great to create a cheap snoot on a very tight budget. And then there's blinds could be used at any table and that also involves the white plexiglass table. Blinds are great for aiming the light at a 45 degree angle at the subject on the white plexus table. And then there are tools that, you know, or equipment that I use to hold things like spring clamps. Any size is great. A spring clamp could maybe hold a mirror. It could hold a silver go card. It could hold anything silver, any type of white reflector, a white card, black card. It could hold all this stuff. 
And the same thing with C or G clamps, and they're all sizes are good, where the C or G clamp is great for holding up like the plastic fusion screw and like the black plexi table. And you can also hold other stuff to the plexi table using a C or G clamp. Duct tape's great for attaching stuff. And then there's clothes pins. Clothes pins, you can attach plastic fusion material on the strobe. You can also, you can also attach colorful gels to the strobe. You could have one gel, you could have different types of gels on one strobe. And some of these items I bought at a hardware store like Home Depot and another store I go to Plaza Arts. You can also buy duct tape and also clothes pins at like a grocery store like Safeway or Giants. This is what my white plexiglass table looks like. I bought this from Amazon. Two places sell this table. It's BH Photo or Amazon. Big price difference between BH and Amazon because of the Manfrotto frame. A lot of people, what they do is they buy the plexiglass, but then they buy a different frame. And when I bought this from Amazon, it came with the frame. And this is still the same plexiglass I use today when I started in 2015 using this plexiglass table. There are many ways to use the white plexiglass table. You can use one light, you can use one flash, you use a LED, you can use a combination of natural light with LED or maybe just with one flash and natural light. And two things are really important where Angle the camera and also position the light because those two you can get, you can create many kinds of shots. And I'll talk about that in the next set of several slides. The next set of slides, I'm gonna talk about how to use one light, two lights, three lights. This is a very simple setup. You just have the light aiming at the product. You wanna make sure you get the label the most important part in a product photograph. Simple white background, this is like a plastic strip from a light box and it's attached by duct tape. I recommend using white or black because it helps the subject stand out. You can use other colors, but I just use white. Sometimes you just have to angle this light so you get the good product label. And to get that glare out, you could use like a black card which will take out the glare. And then for shiny subjects, I recommend using like a plastic fusion scrim so you could take out the glare. And also, you might wanna feather the light to take out the glare. This is another way to use one light with the white plexi table. It's a great setup for the simple white background where you have the strobe with the white scrim and it's facing the camera. And this is a glass subject so the light will shine right through the glass. You probably have to use a low setting on the strobe because it's a powerful light. And then you work on your camera settings. And there are other things you could do. You could have this at an angle. You could also move this back about a foot or two feet many ways to use this. This is how to use two lights with the white plexiglass table. That plastic strip, another slide. Basically it's two lights where you show off the edges. You can have a light here, you can have a light here, or you can have a light facing each other. So it doesn't have to be like this, but this is just one way. And this is great to bring out the labels and also great for smoothing the lighting on the edges. And it's a great setup for contrast. And I remember, like I said, for harsh glares or for more soft or smoother looking strips of light on the product, I recommend like a white scrim reflector 
or a fusion material on a scrim to help control the light. And you might want to feather the strobe so you get the effect that you like. There's a way to add a third light, and I'll talk about that very soon. This is how to use two lights. We have the lighted background facing the camera, but this time I, have a, I don't have a glass subject, I have a non-glass subject where this light is coming at a 45 degree angle. And it could be on a boon arm, it could be a boon stand. Great setup for anything that's, that's non-glass, like a bottle that's non-glass. And there are many ways to use this light, which is the key light. You can have it come from this corner, this corner, you have it come from the side. And if you have a light on the side, you could have like maybe a silver or a white card. If the light here, then you wanna have a silver or a white card just to bounce in lights. This is how to use three lights. This is how I started doing white plexiglass still life photography at McCormey College. It's a great setup to bring out the reflections. It's also a great setup to have the subject appear in a floating motion. Now for the reflections, you wanna have this light close to this edge and you wanna angle the camera so you get a good reflection. For the flowing characteristic, you wanna map of course, increase the light a few stops. You want to have it right underneath. I want to go back to the reflection photograph. You want to have it here, but then you want to have it a very low setting so that you don't blow out the reflections. It's great for showing off the edges. Also, you're ready to have a complete white background. And with three more lights, the same principles apply that I use for one or two lights. And I'd recommend using, you know, gels to change the color of this photograph in the background. And I recommend using maybe a light gel, a dark gel, or a dark gel, a light gel. Or you can have many dips of types of gels that could produce a funky color. And there are ways you can use gels with just one strobe. These are armor clips. You can do this with clothespins. You can do this with C clamps. You can do this with spring clamps. And I recommend very big spring clamps or C clamps. And this is a this is gels on a strobe where you have clothespins. You can use very small spring clamps. You can use duct tape to attach the gel to the strobe. You can do very small spring clamps. So there's many ways to attach gels to strobes. This is one way to use spring clamps. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to flatten out the curb. I recommend very big uh, spring clamps or medium size. You could also do this with C or G clamps, but I recommend using spring clamps because they're easier to work with. This is another illustration of how to use spring clamps. This is holding up like a white plexus sheet. I'd recommend using bigger ones than these. This is like a white foam board, I'd use these. And like I said, for anything that's sort of heavy, use a bigger cl uh, spring clamps. And then like the white boards, it's a little lighter, I'd use a medium size spring clamps. Then you place a strobe, a screw in front of a strobe. You could also use a grid to produce for laddering lighting. It's done in portraiture, it is also done in still life photography. This is a way to have, you know, spring clamps attaching a silver on a white foam board or just to bounce some light into the subject. You'd also just have like a white foam board. 
this is a plastic fusion scrim where it softens the light and you may have to feather the strobe to get smooth light on the edges. So if you have any questions, just email me at mpucciarelliart2016 at gmail.com. I'll talk about the camera settings I use. Um, it's ISO 100, aperture 16, and the shutter is 1 25th of a second, and sometimes I have to go 1 2 50th to control the exposure. I shoot in manual mode, and then if I do light panning, I shoot in bulb mode. And if you use ISO 100 or 200 with the tripod, without a tripod, I use ISO 400 or 800. And I want to shoot in RAW so I get the most editing capabilities to edit the photograph. So if I were to use JPEG, it wouldn't have the editing flexibility as I did in RAW. And for the picture mode, I would use the standard picture style. It's the sharpest, also the portrait sharpest, but the standard picture model is the most sharpest. I've used the mirror mode to use evaluative because it's great for contrast. In the AF focus, I use the autofocus mode. It's also great if you want to use um, for keeping the camera still. It's also great for keeping a sharp photograph. It's also great if you want to use image stabilization, would help this. In the drive mode, it's single shooting, but I've used all the modes. I've used the 10 second timer, two second timer. I've used the H plus continuous. I used it for high speed and low speed. This is the white balance diagram, and I always use daylight white balance. Daylight's the most natural. And the temperature is about 52K, and all these temperatures are measured in Kelvin. I never use auto white balance, it's at least natural, and you add artificial ingredients to photograph. Some people call this available wrong balance, but it's really called auto white, but I just use daylight. Then there's custom white balance, is where you set the white balance by shooting a gray tard. The thing that I like about white custom white balance, if the light changes, then you gotta get it, you gotta do a new custom white balance. And then you set the Kelvins, and these are already set. This is the noise reduction diagram, and one is auto and two is on. When you use two, something always happens. It goes to algorithms, even if there's no problems in a file. What it does, it corrects errors like blue color cast. Earlier DSRs had this problem, but DSRs today don't because of advanced technology. It's available if you need it, but if you're doing fireworks, I recommend one, not two, because if you use two, it takes a lot, lot longer to get back to the screen setting screen and you can miss a shot. That's why I just use one for fireworks. But sometimes I use two, but most times I use one. And this is the diagram for the ISO noise reduction. We have one is low, two is strong, and three is disabled, and then zero is standard. I always use two for the strong. It's better to use, you know, zero low or strong, but don't disable it because you always want to do something about the noise when you take the picture. That's why I'd recommend using two because it's strong. Talked about some of this. In color spaces, sRGB. I know there's Adobe RGB and there's Pro Photo, but for right now I'm just using sRGB because I post on the web. Talked about the white balance. We talked about the custom white balance. And this is 
exposure to bracketing, there's one stop exposure and two stops, where if it's one, you take a regular exposure, one under, one over, and then two, stop exposure, it's two under and two over. All depends on which trinity, how much light you have. I clean my still life tables, both the white and black with Novus. Most of the just use one to get off some fingerprints. You have two for little scratches and three for heavy scratches. And if you use two, then end with one. But if you use three, you gotta go two, then one. I just use one just to take off fingerprints. You usually do a good job. You can buy this at any auto car store or at amazon.com or other websites. And then there's things that it's great for all tables, like even the white flex because it was these blowers. This is like a lens blower. You could use this to blow dust off the white flex table. This is like a turkey tweezer. Or this is also good for blowing off air. And I just recommend, you know, with the lint cloth and some little bit of Novus just to make it shiny with the gentle wipe. These are my lighting modifiers, the mirrors. You can buy these at any drugstore. And these are my mirror plates. And you could use armor clips to hold them up. This is my duct tape, armature wire for holding products in a floating motion. Early photographers in the early film days did this, but now they could do it so now, but now there's the power of Photoshop. These are my C-clamps. These are great for holding up poles. These are great for holding up scrims. And then the spring clamps, these are great for holding up walls on the plexi table and clothespins. And the small things like this could hold, you know, attached gels to strobes. <laughs> These are my gels, and there's many ways. You could use one color gel, you could use three or four color gels. And then the silver cards for adding dramatic light, and then there's gold cards for adding light dramatic with yellowish tints. This is, um, this is cinephil. This is like black aluminum foil. This is great for creating a snoot, and you can attach a snoot on the stray with duct tape. You could do it with Clothespins, you could do it with very small spring clamps. This is film draft paper. This is great for putting in front of a strobe to soften the light. This is what my scrims look like. I made these frames, but then I could buy a frame from a Target store or an art store. This is my plexiglass sheet. These are clear. These are great for doing food with the white background like on the floor. These are my white plexiglass sheets. This is my black. These are great for walls and doing other stuff. It's like I have a miniature plexiglass table, white. You also have a miniature plexiglass table, black, and you also use this black cords. And it's a way to control the light by blocking too much light on a strobe. These are white cards. Big white cards are great for creating a nice white background and also a gray background, depending on how you use the lights. And there's other graph, you could use this folding gray part to bounce light into food. And it's great for adding soft light to photograph. And there's big black cards, which are great for creating black backgrounds. You can also create a light brown background by aiming the light at the background. You get a nice light brown color. Now it's time to go into Adobe Photoshop.
Actually, I'm going to go to bridge first. So what I do is I take several exposures. I pick out the best one. The first thing I want to do is talk about the camera settings. It's aperture 16, shutter 1 2 50th, ISO 100, evaluative metering mode. Exposure mode is manual. Focal length is a 50 prime line. Basically, the white balance is custom, and the temperature is about 54K. It's daylight white balance and a slight increase in the tint, exposure, and these are all the settings that I did in camera raw. So I'm gonna go into camera raw by pressing Control or Command R. So I'm gonna go up here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sync the white balance. I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to try to make improvements. Lose the texture. I just go down. Sharpening's here, but then noise reduction. I want to put it at least 50. I want to remove chromatic aberrations. I want to use profile corrections. I want to make sure those both are checked. I want to make sure this auto thing is checked because that automatically corrects distortion. Then I click done. I'm going to click cancel. I'm going to go into Photoshop. Basically, I'm first gonna talk about how I select and then how I clone. And the object selection. I'll do control D to take it out. I like to use the object selection. It does it automatically. And most times it's used the rectangle. And then what I could do is quick selection. I suppose I just want to increase it. I press the shift key. I suppose I want to decrease the press the all key. And I want to push control D to take out the selection. And then for cloning, I just use a spot healing brush, take out spots, and then I use a clone stamp tool. Then, whoops, I want to do this. This is great. I do shift F5. You want to, this will take out any problems like specs. Then I want to do shift F5 again. You know, I can change the color. A black. I do shift F5. I want to do gray. I do shift F5. I'm going to do, you know, and you can change the color. You can even do this. You can even change the background color. Shift F5. You can change the foreground color. Control Z. 
control Z, I'm gonna do control D to take out the selection. And I like to use layers. I like to use auto. Now what I like to do is use the color sampler. What I try to do is, I'm gonna start with the blue. Actually, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna drag two new points on. I must where it should be, and I'm gonna see if I can just get this up here. Now you look at the numbers, and that this is almost balanced, but then we have too much blue, so. And that's what I do. Now the numbers are balanced or closer together. And if our contrast is like this, and if I wanna, um, let's see if I wanna change. Suppose I could just, what I like to do is you can just say select, save selection, Now I'm gonna to go to channels. I wanna put this thing over here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna do, you know, that. And then I just wanna go over here. And then I wanna just do, uh, let's see. Then I want to use it again. So it, I could use a suction over and over again by saving a channel. So now I want to do this is the filters. I want to also do speckle. I want to do dusts and scratches. I have them at three, you can put it at one. First thing I want to do make sure there are halos. Watch what I do this. Yeah, those are just sharp edges, so I like to just go back to 200. And then I have a lot of actions. A lot of these have actions, lens correction, a lot of actions, anything that's MFP I did. Suppose I wanted to enter this in the print competition. And the, the height is bigger. And I want to save it, export it to JPEG or save for the web. Do a quick export. I have my export preferences. It's. I know some people all don't use JPEG or sRGB. I do, but I may use all the stuff. I only want to 
ask for to export each time. Then I click OK, and I just do a quick export. I'm going to push F12 to bring me back to the original file. Then I'm going to go back to bridge. Where I'm going to go to bridge, I'm going to bring up another file. I'm going to go to the white plexi. I'm going to do a lipstick. Again, I pick up the best two files, but I only get use one. And so now, I'll use this one, I'm gonna use eight. Again, I'm using aperture 16, shutter 1 2 50th, ISO 100. Camera data, manual exposure mode. Falls like it's 50 because I'm using a 50 prime. Tells you the camera, tells you the lens. And these are the raw camera raw adjustments I made. I'm gonna get a camera raw by pushing Control or Commands R. Basically what I do is I sync the white balance with here and I work my way down. I click done, but I'll click Cancel. Now I'm gonna go to Photoshop. I'm going to open up that file. I'm going to open up the listic one. And I have, um, I have a lot of this stuff in actions. This is in scratches. Sharpen. Now we also put a dodge and burn layer. So over here. Then suppose I have guides. I have clear guides. So basically, if I wanted to do here, Gaussian blur. Because you're over here, I gotta use it right. Gaussian blur. Then I'm going to use control D to take the out. Suppose that and this happens. Suppose if I get to this to correct the distortion, you can go to the raw transform. Again, you content aware. Have the action here, but I'll just show it again. Shift F5, content aware. You could also, you know, do black. You can also do gray. 
you could also do white. Control D to take out the selection. And let's see. It's also the speckle. I gotta make sure in the layer. Then I just export it to a quick export. Again, if I wanna enter this into competition, Control Z. I'm gonna push F12 to bring it back to the file. I'm gonna go back to Adobe Bridge. This file, um, it's a JPEG, but what I wanted to do was to bring out these ice cubes. I had a big strobe, but there's too much light going to the ice cubes. That's why I put a, stro a black card to take out the glare. And I was able to bring out the ice. I was able to put this interesting, beautiful texture. It's a power of using a black card just to take out glares, unwanted glares in a photograph. These are all my Facebook groups. My still life group is growing a few members a day. My architect C design group, my business link, my Twitter, my Instagram, my find out website, and my portfolio. If you have any questions about my photography or the white plex table or anything I do, just feel free to email me at mputroyart2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for letting me do this presentation.